Hello and welcome back to iXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick, and today we are doing iXL P8, which has to do with similar triangles and similarity transformations. Okay, so what you're going to see here is you're going to see a series of graphs with two similar shapes on them. And each question is going to ask you for two things. Number one, the translation rule between both shapes, meaning how do we get from uh, a shape of this size in this position over to this shape over here, the larger one, the image, as in the pre-image to the image, how do we get there if we slide it? And number two, what the scale factor is. So how do we get from a triangle of this size right here, this small one, to a large one? Or how do you get from your pre-image to image size-wise? Does it get bigger, smaller, and by how much? Okay. Uh, both of these concepts are pretty much review of before. We're just applying it to similarity because you have to keep in mind two similar shapes are going to be the same shape, but different by a certain scale factor, right? One is just smaller than the other or larger than the other by a certain factor, which is a zoom factor, a scale factor, right? So now we're just kind of combining old concepts with the new similarity stuff here. So let's do translation first. It says you can transform our original triangle E, F, G, so this small one right here, to our E prime, F prime, G prime, by translating it and then performing a dilation centered at the origin. So what we're gonna do to find the translation rule is first we are going to translate the small triangle onto the large triangle or the pre-image to the image, the non-prime to the prime, um, by, by sliding it over to the origin. So F is overlapping on F prime because it says around the origin or at the origin, right? So how the rule works is we move in the x direction and the y direction. So we'll figure out how much we move in the x direction first. So we start at negative eight on the x axis with f right there. And we need to figure out how to get, or how much it takes to get f over to f prime in the x direction. So if we start at negative eight and f prime is at zero, how do we get from negative eight to zero? Well, we just count eight. We go eight in the right direction, right? So in the x direction, we're going in the positive direction. The number is getting higher and higher. So the x part of the translation rule is going to be x plus 8. Because again, in the x direction, we're going 8 in the positive direction, right? Okay. If we're going 8 in the negative direction or to the left, we go x minus 8. Okay, now let's do y. How do we get from f to f prime in the y direction? So we start here at negative three, it looks like, and it ends up at zero. So how do we get from negative three to zero in the y direction? Well, we go up three, right? And so we're gonna go to the translation rule here and we're gonna go y again plus three because we are going in the positive direction. All right, and that's it. So we, if we move eight in the x direction and three in the y, we are going to overlap f and f prime at the origin. Great. Now the scale factor. So how do we get from a, a triangle of this size to a triangle of this size? Well, if the lines were more uh, horizontal or vertical or uh, left to right and up to down, you could just do the counting. You know, if this side was three units long and this side was nine units long, that means the scale factor would be three, right? Because three times three is nine. But since everything's uh, kind of diagonal, we'll do this. Take a point and we'll do maybe G prime and G, and we'll compare the coordinates that way. So after we translate the shape over here, we'll go eight to the right and three up. So we'll go, if we start at negative five, we end up at three. And then if we are at negative five, we'll end up at negative two. So right here, here is going to be where G ends up. So if G is at three comma negative two, what do we multiply that by to get to G prime, which is at nine comma negative six? So if you multiply three times three, it's nine, and negative two times three is negative six. So that matches up. So if we multiply both things by three, that means our scale factor is three. Okay? So if the side, if you can't do the size, then just do the coordinates, and it's going to end up being the same thing. Okay, next. Uh, same deal. You can transform the small one into this large one. Uh, it's pretty much the same problem, so I am going to skip that. Okay, um, more, well, I'll do this one. Okay, so translation rule, and it's again at the origin, so it's going to be h onto h prime. 
Okay, so let's start with the x. What do we have to do in the x direction to get h onto h prime? Well, we start at negative 2, and we have to go to 0. So how do we get from negative 2 to 0? That's just going 2 in the positive direction, right? So we'll go x plus 2. And now y. h is at 6, and uh, h prime is at 0. So how do we get from 6 to 0? Well, we go 6 down in the y direction. Okay, meaning we're going to go y minus 6. We're going from positive 6 to 0. That means we have to go down 6. So y, uh, 6 in the negative y direction. So y minus 6. Okay, now the scale factor. Uh, same deal as last time. We don't have any straight lines. We don't have horizontal or vertical. So we should just rely on the coordinates. So uh, you can do i or j. I'm just going to choose j. And so if we apply the same translation rule to j, we go plus 2 in the x direction, so 1, 2, and then down 6 in the y direction, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so here, at 4, comma, negative 1. How do we get from 4, comma, negative 1 to j prime, which is 8, comma, negative 2? 4, comma, negative 1 to 8, comma, negative 2. Well, if you multiply... 4 by 2, you get 8. And if you multiply negative 1 by 2, you get negative 2. So the scale factor is just 2. And that's all there is to it. OK. OK, nothing different here. Uh, nothing different here. Still nothing different here. Are these problems all the same? Yeah. Now, I do want to point out, this is an example of two triangles that have a vertical side. So if you wanted to find the scale factor, you would just count the, um, the length of the original side. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this is 15 units high. And we go to our side over here, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so we can count now. We don't have to do the coordinates to find our scale factor uh, because we have a vertical side, so we can just count, right? We don't have to do the, the scale factor thing. So how do we get from our pre-image length of 15 to our image of 10? And keep in mind, you have to go from our pre-image to image, right? You have to go from D to D prime. You can't go small to big. So how do we get from 15 to 10? Well, our scale factor is just going to be 10 over 15, right? If you multiply our 15 by 10 over 15, you get our 10. So you can kind of think of it as a ratio where you, you do uh, the second to the first um, uh, length, right? The, the uh, length of the image over the length of the pre-image. So that's going to be our scale factor. Except now we have to simplify this, right? So how can we simplify 10 over 15? Well, we can divide both by 5. That's easy. So 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. So the scale factor is really 2 over 3, meaning this shape is only 2 thirds as large as this shape. Okay? Now we've gone this far in this example, so I might as well just do the translation rule as well. So it says... Uh, uh, translation again at the origin. So we'll go C to C prime. So how do we go from C to C prime? Well, we'll start with the X and in the X direction, we go from seven to zero. So how do we go from positive seven to zero? Well, we have to go seven in the negative X direction. So we're gonna go X minus seven. And then C to C prime in the Y direction, we start at negative three and we end up at zero. So how do we get from negative three to zero? Well, we go up three. We go 3 in the positive y direction, so we'll go y plus 3. Okay, and we've already done our scale factor there, so I'm going to click Submit, and that is going to be correct. Okay, so I'm going to skip. Uh, same deal here around the origin. Okay, so all the problems are the exact same thing. They just get a little more complicated with the scale factor and such, but that's totally fine, okay? So just use those as examples, and I will catch you on the next IXL tutorial video later. Goodbye.